so you want to prepare yourself for the upcoming OSCE exam. Look no further, I'm here to help you. Before I begin, I want to apologize for my voice sounding like this. I'm just recovering from a cold and uh, yeah, I hope I'm going to be able to give you good content anyway. So let's get on with this. A common station that occurs um, during the OSCE exam is swollen legs. Start from the basics. Um, introduce yourself, um, saying your full name and your role and that will give you a couple of points. Always remember to explain the purpose of this uh, consultation or this interview. Then you can start asking the simple question. Start with an open question um, and listening without interrupting. So simple things like, how can I help you today? Or what brought you in today? Now let's get into the nitty gritty of this um, history taken. Now there's different ways you can approach the presenting complaint. Um, so I, I would like to say I have an acronym, acronym for uh, swollen legs, but not really. But I tend to use this kind of acronym called DOPTAS. So D stands for duration, O for uh, onset, P for progression, T for timing, A for associated symptoms, which is mainly what this history is going to revolve around. So that is where you get most of your points. S for um, severity and E for exacerbating factor. So with this acronym, you can get some good information about the patient. It's very important to know which limb or which leg is affected by the swelling. It could be one leg, unilateral, both legs, bilateral. And if you want to go into further details, you want to ask more questions. Is the swelling mainly around the ankles? or the calf itself or both of them so it's also important to ask the patient how long have they had the symptoms for and how long the symptoms have been present for uh, in the case duration and onset kind of like overlined but you can ask them separately to get the same information let's move to p which stands for progression in my opinion it's important to know um, if the patient is getting worse or the symptoms are getting worse or if they are staying the same or improving. Now let's move to timing. It's important to know when um, the legs are more swollen. For example, is it after a long period of um, immobility? Maybe the patient is bed bound or they've been sat in a long journey in a plane or in a bus or any type of form of transport. Or does the leg become more swollen um, after a long walk and uh, which is relieved by resting? Now let's move to A. I tend to start by asking any shortness of breath when laying down flat. Basically you're asking about orthopnea. My follow up question will be, um, do you have any sensation of shortness of breath that wakes you up at night? This will cover the question about paroxysmal, nocturnal dyspnea. Now you want to rule out the cardiorespiratory causes of swollen legs. The main question again is shortness of breath, palpitation, hemoptysis, which is coughing up of blood, and sputum production. Don't forget about your systemic inquiry. Ask about nausea, vomiting, weight loss, uh, lethargy, sweating, and uh, any other symptoms that can come to your mind. Mm, now let's go to the source. Uh, ask about the risk factors. Um, I'm going to say this, venous, thrombo, embolic, events, VTE, VTE. Ask them about any recent surgery. Most patients that have um, a recent surgery present, well not most, but some patients present with uh, swollen leg and obviously you need to think about DVT in that case. Um, Obviously, if a patient have a high risk factor of uh, PE, DVT, and they come for a long flight, again, you have to think about VTE. Any past history of VTE, and that uh, obviously puts you into the point of knowing this patient is at higher risk. Any family history of clotting, um, and obviously any history of uh, malignancy. What I'm saying is to have an idea about the well score. 
So if you don't know about the world score, so just look it up or uh, ask me to make a video about the world score and I will do that. Okay, I feel we are spending a lot of time in the associated symptoms. So just bear with it. It's very important because you need to pass your exams. All right. So ask about diabetes. If they have diabetes or any family history of diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, any family history of heart condition, lung condition, cancers. Um, if they've had any recent cardiac intervention, intervention, you know, cabbage and all those stuff, just to be safe and make sure you cover everything in the in the consultation. Now moving on to S. S stands for severity. It's quite difficult to um, assess severity in regards to a patient presented with swollen legs. But what I tend to ask for, for severity is about pitting edema. So I normally ask the patient if you um, press the swollen part of your feet or your leg um, for a couple of seconds, does it leave like a little dimple or a pit? Yes or no? And finally, E. We stand for exacerbating factor or slash relieving factor. In this case, the only thing you would generally ask is does the swelling go um, away by itself by resting or keeping your feet elevated? Yes or no? Or is it just worse by itself? Nothing makes it better or worse. Simple as that. Moving to the past medical history, it's important to structure your question around what your differential is. If you're thinking along the side of uh, cellulitis, which is one of the common causes of uh, swollen leg, you can ask any questions about mobility and any history of in infections. Obviously, patients that have diabetes are more susceptible and also patients that are immunocompromised and they may have cancer or peripheral arterial disease or kidney disease or chronic kidney disease specifically. If you're thinking along the side of a DVT, um, you can ask obviously the more systemic questions such as shortness of breath, chest pain, any recent long flight, and obviously if the patient is pregnant, uh, that's another indication for swollen legs. Um, if the patient on uh, is on contraceptive pills, specifically the combined pill, is the patient obese? any recent history or past history of uh, DVT slash PE, any recent trauma. Now, moving on to drug history. Obviously, like we discussed, if you're taking any um, contraceptive pill, specifically the combined calcium channel blockers, which may cause uh, leg swelling, and ask about allergies. Then you can ask some social history questions. Are you a smoker? Do you uh, drink alcohol? How much, how many units do you drink? And uh, you can ask about drug history if you want to. You can also ask some questions about, you know, um, occupation, uh, diet and lifestyle, just to dive in, into the relevant social history, depending on the type of patient. And you get some extra points for that. And after you've done this, um, you know, close the consultation by tanking the patient and moving to the next step of the consultation. You've come to the end of your uh, history taking and the examiner asks you the following questions. Um, what is your differential? If you're thinking along the side of cellulitis, uh, you will have a patient presented with leg pain or swollen leg, uh, which is red, hot to touch, and they may be tachycardic and have a fever. If you've taken a history and your differential is a deep vein thrombosis or DVT, you would generally have a patient who might have uh, recently undergone surgery and they present to you with mild tachycardia, shortness of breath, uh, leg pain, in this case calf pain, which is tender to touch, and then on examination you have oedema. If you're thinking along the side of heart failure, you would generally have a patient that is quite elderly, which will present with swollen legs, shortness of breath, which is worse on uh, lying down. On examination, you may hear crackles on, uh, on both of the lungs, and you will hear a S3 heart sound. Okay, and there's a lot more differential that we could cover, but these are the ones I've th I think you may likely get in the OSCE exam. 
Okay, the next question the examiner will ask you is what investigation will you request? Now, if you're thinking cellulitis, you might not need a further investigation because most of the time um, the diagnosis is sufficient just by history taking and um, examination. However, if you want to be specific, you can request a blood test um, and you can request the blood culture. Um, you can request the CRP and ESR uh, to rule out any signs of infection. So if you're thinking along the side of uh, DVT, the most important test to request is a D-dimer. The next important one would be a ultrasound Doppler. And uh, if you examine the patient, obviously, um, you would notice a difference in the leg measurement. Generally, we say anything above three centimeters is kind of like, you know, significant for DVT. Uh, if you want to request blood test, you can request a coagulation screening. Um, so that's quite good. That will give you indication for the INR and the APTT. And finally, you can request an ECG if you want to be specific. Now, if you're thinking along the side of a heart failure, you request all your routine blood tests, uh, full book count, LFT, uh, ESR, CRP, uh, thyroid function test. Um, so that will give you a good picture. But the main one, if you're thinking along the side of a heart failure, failure would be your BNP. I don't remember what that stands for. It's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even going to try this one. Um, hmm. The next thing you can uh, request is a chest x-ray to see the size of the heart and any type of, you know, rules out any type of infection on the lung basis because you will hear crackles. And um, finally, you can request an ECG. And that's it. Uh, you concluded your history taking for swollen legs and leg swelling. I hope this video was good enough for you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more content. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.